good to see everybody. It's wonderful to be able to gather together and to study the Word of God. I apologize for messing up the projector for everyone. <laughs> Just trying to do what I was told to do. And uh, no, uh, but we'll, we'll get that fixed up uh, soon enough. Uh, Ron's usually pretty good. It's, he saw he had it up going for a second. Um, and so if he had just a little more time, we know that he could uh, get that figured out. And so, um, but it is a good reminder to me of why I always need to make sure I have a hard copy of my lesson. Otherwise, you know, you might not uh, have everything with you. So, um, if you want to open up your Bibles, though, and uh, if you did grab a bulletin, the lesson should be 2 Corinthians, not 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. I put the wrong chapter, or the wrong book, it's not 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, on the top of the bulletin. Um, so mark that out, put two up there. And uh, that's where we're going to be focusing uh, in the lesson for this morning. Uh, this is a, uh, of course, out of the passages, if you're still following along, at the beginning of the year, I had put out the uh, schedule to read the entire New Testament within the year by reading one chapter a day throughout, uh, Monday through Friday, and then having Saturday or Sunday to either catch up or reflect upon those scriptures. And so this is one of those chapters in which you should have read this week. And so... Um, of course, I had, uh, during uh, those who follow on Facebook, I've been doing a, a verse out of these as we go through it each morning, and I didn't use these verses, and so I'm going to go ahead and present a lesson on these verses. I think it's a good thought and things that in which we can think about today, that we can think about in what we're going through in life with this pandemic, with the virus, and everything else that is going on to keep our faith in God as we continue to strive to follow him from day to day. And so 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to go ahead and go read these verses. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and starting in verse 16. 2 Corinthians 4, and starting in verse 16. It says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And so I want to look through these three verses and, of course, bring a couple verses out with them to help explain these verses and see how they can apply to us today, see how they do apply to us today, and how we can use it to help and aid us. So the first point I want to bring out this morning is talk about the outward man. The outward man, as we read it here, it says, even though the outward man is perishing. See, this is sometimes the reasons we get caught up and getting discouraged. We get caught up and being upset. And we've already mentioned those who we need to be praying about this morning. And we know that there's been others throughout this month that's had uh, some surgeries. And so uh, with the virus out there, people are caught up and worrying about catching it because they, some people already have some health problems and they're worried about how much it'll affect them. And so we worried about the outer man. We worried about the physical body in which we live in which we possess, in which we have to have in order to live a life upon this earth. And understanding that it is perishing no matter what. It is dying. Each day that we get older is another day closer to our final day upon this world. And so as we read through these verses here, there's a few things that I wanted to note about that part of it. Is that it says, even though our outer man is perishing, and then in verse 17, it brings out that it is a light affliction. It's light, meaning that, that, that we do go through certain things upon the surface. Uh, in the getting back into running and, and doing stuff, you know, body aches. You know, you, you do some workout out in the yard and you do something or you twist the wrong way and your, your body hurts. And sometimes it don't feel so light. Sometimes it don't feel so 
uh, you know, as you know, you can rub it off, you know, uh, rub some dirt on it and just keep on going. Sometimes it feels so pain, it feels so bad. And you know, as uh, we uh, announced those who are going through treatment, we've been talking about Brian, uh, Brian Ward, uh, Alan's son, and I can't imagine going through uh, the chemo and stuff and, and how, how bad that, that's, that is. And we know that some people who've gone through uh, the virus, that they talked about how, how bad that is. And so, you know, some stuff it is hard. We're also comparing that to the mindset of living an unfaithful life in this world and leading to a life of eternal destruction, an eternal life of punishment, eternal life of torment, that any affliction that we go upon in this earth is not going to compare to an eternal life in a lake of fire. You turn to Revelation chapter 22. In Revelation 22, and I don't have this verse in the bulletin along with the lesson. Uh, Revelation 21. Revelation 21 and verse 8. So this is a side verse that you can add into there. But it says the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Here is an eternal lake of fire that those who are caught up in the unrighteousness shall be cast into with the devil and his angels. <coughs> Any affliction that we face upon this earth is life. And we need not get caught up in the worldly things and setting our treasures upon this earth because it's all perishing. It's all coming to an end. That's why it's a, it's a light affliction. And just but for a moment, there in verse 17, it says, which is but for a moment, just, just for a short while upon this earth, our life is like a vapor. Here for a moment and the next is gone. We need to understand that. And so therefore we don't want to get caught up in the worldly things of this world and focusing on what we can see. In Matthew, turn along with me there, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19. Matthew chapter 6 and in verse 19. Matthew 6 and verse 19. It says, Do not lay up your, for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Again, that's what we get caught up in doing. We focus upon all these worldly treasures. We focus upon all these possessions that we so badly desire to have. And then we covet it after what everybody else has. We get jealous about what other possessions people are able to obtain for themselves. And we want it for ourselves. But we need not to treasure the things of this world. And we'll talk about the remaining uh, two verses there, 20 and 21, here in, in a short bit. Um, and we'll come back to that. But let's turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, if you will, with me. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And turn along with me there and read with me, starting in verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and starting in verse 3. It says, In the day when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men bow down, when the grinders cease, and because there are few, Keep on reading. It says, When the grinders cease because there are few, and those who look through the windows grow dim. When the doors are shut in the streets and the sound grinding low, that is not what I want. I think I got the wrong book, the wrong chapter. I apologize right there, right off the bat. There you go, chapter 10. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just move on, and I will find that verse for you later, and I'll announce it tonight at Bible class. But there is a verse in there that I was pulling out that spoke about the old man and no longer able to serve well. He, he, he walks, and it's just about the body, and it's good verses that, that I had found, and I obviously typed it up wrong. And so we, we move on to the next verse that I have here in John chapter 15. If you will, John chapter 15. In John chapter 15... And read along with me, starting in verse 18. John 15 and starting in verse 18. 
As you read here, it says, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember, the world that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. And so again, focused upon being part of this world and being uh, liked by everybody else and by the possessions of this world. And it says if we are of Christ, though, these things aren't going to be so. If we are following the Lord, then we need to understand that the world is going to hate us because we don't participate with them. We don't give in to drunkenness. We don't go in with sexual immorality, whether it's adultery, fornication, homosexuality, any of them. We, we are not okay with any of those actions. And therefore, the world gets upset that we would teach against such things, that we would say that it is wrong to continue in such things and not participate in the filthy talk and swearing and cursing with everybody else. And so the, the world thinks we're weird because we do not do as they do. And yet, because of all these things, because of the ways of the world, because people don't always agree with us and they get mad at us, especially in today's time as people are trying to sway side and say, if you're not with them, then they try to, to put a, a note on you by saying, well, well then you're just, you're not accepting, man. You need to grow into the times of today. And we can allow that to pull us down, pull us on. We need to be ready to face such persecution. We need to be ready to understand that, that whether it's uh, just verbal persecution, whether it's physical persecution, whether it's simply growing old and dealing with uh, the aging body, whatever we're going through, we have to be ready for these things and ready to stand faithful to the Lord. And Matthew chapter 6 is again here telling us that we will suffer, verse Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 11. Matthew 5 and verse 11 says, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And so that leads us into our next point there. That leads us into the opposite of what we read there in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Because you got one side that is looking to the man who is declining, the man who, who is being brought down, who is getting upset and losing his faith. And then you've got the other that says, look at the other side. Look how we are so blessed in the Lord. And so if you turn back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, a few points to bring out from here. The very first thing that we read in verse 16, it says, Therefore, do not, we do not lose heart. Do not lose hope. Do not lose your faith. And whatever you're going through, whether it's physical sickness, spiritual weakness, whether it is dealing with uh, the world or dealing with brethren or dealing with family, that we don't lose heart. We keep our faith in God. We keep our faith and trust in the one thing that is not going to change. Again, keep your fingers marked there. James chapter 1 and verse 17. James chapter 1 and in verse 17 it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Here says there, there's no variation or shadow of turning. It does not change. There's a hymn in our hymn books titled God's Unchanging Hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. He does not change. He does not sway. He cannot be pushed over. He does not say, well, this is what the majority is doing. I guess I'll go this way now. Amen. He stands strong. And so therefore we can rely on our God. We can rely on our Lord. Do not lose heart. Even though the outward man is perishing, he says the inward man is being renewed day by day. Of course, that's up to you. That part right there is up to you. If you're being renewed, 
spiritually, inwardly, day by day. That's your choice. Because I guarantee you, we've all went through some times where there's been days that we haven't been renewed. We let, we let the things of this world overtake us spiritually, overtake our mind. We get caught up in being depressed. We get caught up and focused on the bad things. We get caught, caught up and focused on the things that are disappointing us. And therefore, we're, we're not renewed. We don't feel strength. We don't feel happy. We're losing hope. But there's a way in which we can be renewed every single day. If we start off our days with prayer, start off our days with studying the Word of God and allowing God to build us up, because guess what? It doesn't matter how bad things get in the world. It doesn't matter that those who, who you may look up to and they fail you and you're caught up, well, what do I do now? Guess what? God's still there. He does not change. He does not go anywhere. He's always there for you. And so you read further on in these verses as we look through it. It also brings out here the inward man is being what? It, seems, it says here, as you continue at the end, of the inward man is being renewed day by day. And then as you continue through it, that these sufferings are just for a moment. I mean, that, that's, that's again another good point. If we can focus and remember that it's just a short while that we have to live upon this earth, that it's just a short while that we have to deal with the persecution of this world. It's just a short while that we have to live a life on this world. And after that, an eternal home in heaven. Because it makes the suffering just, what does it matter? It's just for a short time. And if I can remain faithful through it, if I can get through it, then there's something better on the other side. you continue to read at the end of verse 17. In the end of verse, it says, it's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Eternal weight of glory. We think about all that we read through that, that has been promised to us, a crown of life, eternal life, a crown of righteousness, a room in heaven. If anything, out of Revelation chapter 21 about the street of gold, the pearl gates, the, the walls, uh, the names, and no need of sun and moon because we're in the presence of our Lord, we're in the presence of our Father, then it's all worth it. Eternal glory. Again, because we focus on the things that are not seen rather than the things that are visible to us now. So I want to bring out a few verses to go along with this. A point that once again, we must remain faithful through it all. We have to be willing to continue to fight every single day. Revelation chapter 2, and verse 10. Revelation chapter 2, and verse 10, where it tells us, Behold, the devil shall cast him into prison, that you may be tried and have tribulation ten days. Be faithful till death, and I will give you the crown of life. He's going to give you a crown of life. But again, he's warned you. Satan is seeking to take you under with him. So therefore, you have to be willing to overcome temptations and trials. You have to be willing to search the scriptures to be able to know right and wrong. That means when we have hard times, and we're going to have hard times, don't think it's bad that you have hard times. We are people. We are humans. We're going to have times that we struggle. But guess what? That means go to God in prayer. He's going to be there for you, and he'll strengthen you, and he'll guide you through it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Because as we face temptation, as we face persecution, God will be there. No temptation has overtaken you, except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Yes, you will be persecuted. Yes, you will face temptation. Yes, you will struggle. But you can come out on the other side without giving any sin. Why? Because God is faithful. God is there for 
you. If you're willing to open up your Bibles and search the Scriptures, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So if you want to strengthen your faith, then open up your Bible and study. Open up your Bible and read it. We must be willing to run the race. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. As we read there in Revelation 2.10 that we must remain faithful till death here. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 7. If we can be faithful and we continue to do the work of God, we can have the confidence of the Apostle Paul as he has here. He says, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. We can say the same thing. We can get caught up in saying, I have done my part. Again, Paul admits time and again throughout his letters, he knows of the wrong that he's done. He knows of the sin that he had committed. He knows that he was there when people were stoned to death, when Stephen was stoned to death. But yet he has so much faith in the promise of God that his sins are forgiven. Because he was baptized and his sins were washed away. And he has confidence from that time point on that he has done all that he could to continue to teach and preach and follow in the footsteps of Christ. I'm not saying that he never sinned again. But that whatever sin that he has committed, he repented of and asked for forgiveness of. So he's able to stand here and say, I have finished the race, and there is a crown of righteousness waiting for me that he will give to me because he's promised it. That's trust in God. He trusts in God that much. Do we fully have faith that he says he's going to give you that room in heaven, that he's going to give you that room in heaven? Because we have been faithful to him, because we've been following in his footsteps. In Psalm 23, 23rd Psalm. Psalm 23 and in verse 3. Psalm 23 and in verse 3. It says, He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And here we turn to God for our restoring so that He can strengthen us. In Psalm 51, 51st Psalm. Psalm 51 and reading in verses 10 through 12, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Again, how do we become restored? How do we gain strength? How do we overcome temptation? We draw closer to God. Draw nearer to God, and He will draw nearer to you. We, the devil, can draw near to God. You can overcome temptations. You can remain faithful till that day He has set aside. I said we come back to Matthew 6, so let's go there and finish the lesson. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, and read along with me. Matthew chapter 5. No, I'm right. I love myself all. Matthew 6, verses 20 and 21. I'm coming back to the Beatitudes. Matthew 6, and starting in verse 20, because we've already read verse 19, it says, But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, where thieves do not break and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where is your treasure? Where is your home? Are you able to sing? We have that other hymn in our song books. We are but strange pilgrims. Is that the way you feel as you live your life upon this earth? I'm just here for a short while. Long. You know, I'm pilgriming through. I'm, I'm going forth and spreading the good news where God has set me forth at. But this is not my home. My home is in heaven. My treasure is in heaven. 
That's where I long to be. That's where I desire to be. And again, if we act like we're not, you know, as we can tell when, when someone's from a, a foreign country because the way they speak, they have a different accent, or even if they're just from a different part of this country, you know, they carry a different accent. We can tell that they're different, right? They don't, they don't belong from around here. But they can make their home here, right? They can eventually, you know, settle in. The thing is, we're not supposed to settle in to, 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 to the world. We don't want to get caught up in being settled in to this world to where we start to fit in so much that people can't tell that our residence is at heaven with our God, with our Lord. And so if you haven't come to the Lord for Him to wash away your sins, to become a child of God, to be heirs in Christ so that you can inherit that promise that God has made to you. That if you keep His commandments, then you will receive the crown of life. We encourage you to do that this morning, to be baptized, to wash away your sins. If you're here and you haven't obeyed, and you need to pray to congregation to aid you, to strengthen you, if there's anything we can do for you, we'll sing 109 out of the self lament as we stand and sing. Please come forward as we stand and sing. Oh, fill my cup, oh, fill my cup, let it overflow, oh, fill my cup.